Hello, it is Friday, March 7th, and you are listening to, and hopefully watching, uh, Brood and Boarded. Uh, it's been, man, months since we've done one of these. Uh, well, this is, this, this is uh, our happy hour show. It's like a comic book happy hour uh, <laughs> show. Um, and it'll feature, you know, staff members talking comics, listeners, readers. Hopefully at some point I'll post a link during the show and we'll get some other people, other people to show up a, a, and talk with us. Um, right now, um, I have Kelly and Steve with me. Hello. Hey, what's up, guys? So we are going to be chatting a little bit later um, about uh, all new Marvel now and our favorite number ones from from that movement. That's something that that, topic that Kelly suggested. But before we get to that, um, just want to see how's it going, Kelly. How how is your Friday? How was your week? What are you looking forward to for the weekend? Um, let's see, uh, a friend of mine that plays lacrosse in college, and I've never seen lacrosse before, so I'm actually going to go watch, uh, the game, which is going to mm. be fun, and then, uh, a friend of mine is, it's her birthday, and she's going to get hibachi and do karaoke tomorrow night, so I'm going to go do that, so that's going to be really, really awesome. Nice, nice, that sounds, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Um, now, you have, you've never seen lacrosse, have you been to a hibachi place before? Oh, Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. No, that's, like, one of my favorite things in the whole world. So that's why I was, like, when she picked it, I was just like, yes, yes, I will come to your party. I mean, I was <laughs> going to go anyway, but now I'm really going to go because the hibachi is, like, a big selling point. And I love karaoke, so it's kind of perfect. All right, all right. So hibachi and karaoke and lacrosse. Mm-hmm. You let us know how all that goes. I will. I will. Uh, Steve, what do you have planned for this weekend, sir? What do I have planned? Uh, I am actually in the middle of writing a piece uh, in basically an honor and in memory of Harold Ramis for uh, my Ink and Pixel column. I'm doing a Ghostbusters, Real Ghostbusters, The Ghostbusters mashup. Hmm. So taking, you know, uh, 70s, 80s, 90s cartoons and the film and kind of putting them together and just writing about the the process of them and whatever. It's a good time. I had a lot of fun. I, I worked on it a lot today, and uh, I'm, I'm grooving on it. I like when you're writing something and you get into a good flow, and uh, so I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, otherwise, I am going to be reading more comics, cleaning up my place, and hopefully fitting in some video games. I've been playing uh, South Park, Stick of Truth, quite a bit. Ooh, how is it? It is pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Um, the best way to describe it is that it's it's super super official. Mm -hmm. it, you feel like you're participating in the next like big South Park movie, based loosely upon Lord of the Rings and various other things. Like everything that happens in the game happens very seamlessly. So you move from one scene to the next, from one battle to the next, and it all just fits together with no load screens, and it looks like an extended episode of South Park. That's so cool. Um, the combat is also pretty awesome. It's like Paper Mario-style combat, where you it's like turn-based, but you still have to interact with the fight, um, which I love, because if you think about it, sometimes when you're playing like Final Fantasy and, and stuff like that, you kind of do the set it and forget it, where mm -hmm. you just have a, a series of attacks that you do because you're high enough level and you can defeat anything. With South Park, you actually have to stay engaged in the battle and block when you have to, otherwise you get hit really hard. Mm. Um, and it's, so far, if you're a fan of South Park, it's hysterical. So, um, I'm really enjoying it so far. Yeah, I played it for about, um, like, three hours last night. Oh, and really? What you think? Yeah, and a little bit this morning. I loved it. I mean, first of all, it looks exactly like an episode. Yeah. Right. So you've got that going for it, where you feel, you feel like you're inside South Park, like you were saying, Steve, and it's amazing. You know, it's fully voice acted. There, there is hundreds, if not thousands, of bits of incidental dialogue happening, kind of at all times. Lots of references to the show, but you know, I, I'm a South Park fan, but I can't say I've watched a new episode in three years, probably. Oh, I'm the same way. I'm, I'm like, I'm like mm -hmm. first four seasons, and then I dropped off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I loved 
you know, South Park, and it just, it's not, I didn't stop watching because I didn't like it, I just, it just fell out of my schedule, so. Yeah. I was excited to hear about this game, but as anyone who follows video games and follows South Park knows, there have been literally no good South Park video games <laughs> in any of the ones that they've tried to make, chiefly among them South Park 64, which is one of, like, the worst games ever. I'll, but... tell, I'll tell you one of them that I enjoyed. I enjoyed Chef's Love Shack. Hmm. For all that it was worth, it was it was silly and it was stupid, but it was it was pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> if you play uh, with friends, it was pretty funny. <laughs> so I, I was you know I was I had a little bit of a I was reserved about what it was going to be like, but yeah. it's been awesome. I mean the RPG elements are fun. You know it it does have that Paper Mario t- style combat, but the actual kind of overworld is I kind of call it like Skyrim light. You know oh. because I spent a lot of time. You know, I got the first quest from Cartman right. to go get Token, Tweak, and um, I can't remember the other kid's name that I that I had to go get. It's eluding me too. I don't remember. Uh, and but I, I but for the first you know two hours I played the game, I just walked around the town and went in like every single store and yeah. you know stole countless items from people to sell to get myself money. I'm I'm, I'm a baller right now. I got like two hundred dollars, which is <laughs> a lot for a kid. Have you found uh, like, have, have you found the Chin Pokemon? Oh yeah, I found a couple of them already. Uh, yes. Every time I find one, and that that guy comes in, Pokemon, I crack yeah. up. It's so. Oh fun. my god. I love it. it. It's awesome, and there's lots of great little things all, all over the place. You know, I I went into the Chinese food place, and I, I got the quest to defeat the Mongolians, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. And I met Al Gore. He wants me to go track down Man Bear Pig. So there's all of this stuff that that's pretty awesome. Um. It's great, you know. the 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 combat is fun. The voice acting is great. It it's hilarious. So, I, I it, as long as you don't dislike South Park, because if you dislike South Park, not not the game for you in, in, in any in any way, sort of the imagination. But if you if you actually like it, then it, there there's no reason why you shouldn't play the game. Because it's just right. so, I mean, so even, even when they were, like all this time that it's been held up that they've been making it, they've said, you know, this is going to be a South, like you're going to be in South Park, but you're going to have it's an RPG. But um, I know some people were talking about the game's length of it being like maybe only about maybe 12 hours or so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I mean, the quality of it thus far that I've seen and played so far feels completely worth if that if this is going to be 12 hours long and I get to do and see this and it's as fluid as it's been so far all the way through I mean that's pretty awesome it's a pretty cool gaming you know gaming experience yeah absolutely absolutely and oh, look I'd rather have 12 incredibly dense hours than 30 hours where there's only 12 hours of story exactly you know there's 12 hours there but I haven't been bored in any moment I've done anything even uh-huh. the even the side stuff, even just walking around, there's always stuff to hear, always stuff to see, and that's what's important to me when it comes to games like that. Um, if you want a game that's longer than that, go play a game that's longer than that. But I think for what it's bringing to you, it's it's pretty awesome. What are yeah. you uh, What are you playing it on? Xbox 360. Nice. Yeah, it's it plays great. Yeah, you know, and it's funny because we have these next gen systems, and this month is really the first month where that's going to start to pay off for the people who kind of invested early in them. But playing this game, it looks as as good as it possibly ever would could or want to look. Because I feel like I'm watching an episode. There's no moment where I don't feel like that. So it's been pretty <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so South Park Stick of Truth is great. So if, you're, if anybody was on the fence about it, definitely check it out. Um, so let's talk a little bit about comics, guys. Okay. Let's talk a little about comics. Um, so, Steve, I already know what your book of the week is going to be for the Talking Comics podcast. Indeed. Let's uh, let's not talk about that one uh, tonight because we don't want to we don't want to eat our own tail. Did you read it? I did read it. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, a mis- mis- little little mystery, but uh, that that last page or or the like the all right, we'll talk about it on the show. Yeah, we will. But yeah, <laughs> I really really enjoyed it. It's this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we'll talk about that later. I'm also not gonna. I haven't read everything yet because it was another big week. But I've read enough to to talk about some stuff and to get into it. Um, uh, Kelly, what have you read anything this week so far? Yeah. So I'm actually really behind. I'm trying to catch up on things. Um, okay. 
but I've been reading a lot of like number ones and stuff. So uh, I read She Hulk this week. I read Loki, Agent of Asgard. Um, I read The Winter Soldier, and I read what was the other? I read Moon Knight. Um, and I really, really loved Moon Knight, and I didn't know anything about it going in. And I was, but I really like Warren Ellis because mm-hmm. I really loved him in Next Wave. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, I got to read Moon Knight, and I thought it was really, really good and just very different and unusual from like it didn't feel like a Marvel book to me, in a sense of like I know he's a superhero, but it felt much more like a detective who has this weird superhero complex, explore, you know, kind of investigating crime. Yeah, absolutely. It's again, I don't want to talk too much about that book. My personal view on it, because I know we're going to talk about it when we get to the show on Tuesday. But you know, you say you didn't know it. You didn't know anything about Moon Knight. Did you pick it up because it was a Warren Ellis book? Yeah, actually, my boyfriend was really interested in it, but I was kind of moderately interested too because of Warren Ellis, because I had read Next Wave uh, when we were snowed in a couple weeks ago, and I thought it was like. I'd never read anything by Warren Ellis before, and I just thought it was so funny and so brilliant. Um, so I knew, I had a feeling Moon Knight wasn't going to be like that, and that's totally fine, but I just really was interested in reading more of him as a writer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's cool. I mean, it's, it's a great character to, 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 to go after right now because it is relatively unknown but loved by a certain group of people. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 what was your take on the art, and especially the depiction of Moon Knight himself in the book, Kelly? The art was really beautiful. I really thought it fit the theme very well, like where it was a little bit more gritty, almost a little bit scratchy, but um, not so gritty that it was like murky and hard to look at. It was actually, I loved the art. And um, again, I don't really know anything about the character, so it's like my perception of what how he's being portrayed here is a little bit limited, but... I liked the fact that he's, like, they clearly are dealing with, like, past stuff from his history, like the dissociative identity disorder. Um, you know, the they're not going to just, like, pretend like none of that stuff happened, but I felt like they dealt with it in a very easy way where it's, like, very casual and they could just kind of mention it and then keep going. Right, um, yeah. So, Absolutely. yeah. Yeah, to- totally, totally. Um, Steve, I don't, I'm sure you want to talk about it uh, on the show this week as well, so I don't know how much you want to say about Moon Knight right now. But I'll just I'll I'll say this. I really, really, really dug it a lot. And if I didn't just read it just last night, I'm I it might be something that we can talk about later when we get to our favorite things of the new uh, all new Marvel Now stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it had it coming from Marvel, it had a lot of unexpected just the tone of it was unexpected, the the tw- not so much the twist, but it like, it got weird. It got yeah. got really like it got really weird. Mm-hmm. And I, was, I was like, oh my god, like Marvel's doing weird again. I love it when they do weird, and that's not to mention just it was so sleek. You know the 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 color the colors of it, the art of it was just. I love the design. For him, now, see, now I'm talking about it. All right. Um, <laughs> there you go. There's a teaser for the for the podcast. Uh, I, I, I did really I, love the coloring, too. Ah, it was so good. It was yeah. so good. I wasn't expecting to want to pick it up, but now I think I actually am going to stick with it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, it, I mean, again, well, I don't want to talk about it too much, but <laughs> they're, they're, it's, it's going to be a topic of conversation. I know it will. But it, it was funny because... First of all, I need to read it again because I read it right before I went to bed and was dozing off in the <laughs> middle of reading it. Mm-hmm. But I, I was really struck, and I'll just say this, by the the way that Moon Knight is predict is um is shown in the book. The the, the it almost feels like you know unpens it just it feels like un, it looks like uninked shape, like one uninked shape in the mm-hmm. middle of all of this finished art which I think is a pretty striking way to depict the character. So yeah. I, I look forward to seeing what, what comes after it, and I don't I have no idea what's going to come, so that gets me excited about what's going to happen. Um, well uh, Steve, what, what have you read this week that maybe is not, not going to make it to Books of the Week, but 
Um, so you want to you want to talk about it a little bit? Well, since everybody's been talking about it and you lent it to me uh, a few weeks back, I actually been reading Next Wave. Yay! Nice. Yeah. Um, it's super good. It's it's like highly highly entertaining. Uh, it's goofy, but mm. it it's it's got a, a certain amount of charm to it, and uh, it's it has like an attitude, almost. Mm-hmm. And uh, like it just, it, it's almost kind of like flipping you off, in a way, and where it leaves the story, and it's just here's a here's a here's an idea for a comic. It's gonna be two issues long, but it's just an idea. It's not a whole story. It's just adventures of these weird this weird team that exists, and uh, it's pretty damn funny, and it's it's beautiful. As well, the uh, Stuart Eminem art and and colors are just gorgeous. It looks like stills from like a really high class uh, animated uh, mm-hmm. film or television show. Yeah, you know? and with having read stuff like Ecstatics recently, I'm just I'm so I'm so in the in the mood for that vibe and and that strangeness and quirkiness about even not just one character but a whole group of them. Right, yeah. They play off of each other really well and all, <laughs> all the people that are on the team are on there for a reason because you can write them and that they have a synergy with one another and a banter with one another that it just it pops and it works. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, a while back on the podcast we talked about I guess profanity in comics. Mm-hmm. And how it's represented, and and whether or not it should even be there, or whatever. And both, I think, both you and Stephanie were saying that the way that it's used in Next Wave is completely hilarious, and it totally works, and it totally does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, I believe it from all of the characters that you know that curse. Like, I get it. Yeah, and, absolutely. Because it, it, it feels like it feels like part of the story. You know, it feels like it's a, an intrinsic part of what Warren Ellis is doing there. Right. It, the tone and everything, it's wrapped up in, in, in that. Right. So, yeah. I mean, it, for me, like, it, it I mean, this might be a, a weird way to, to put it, but, like, it feels rated R to me mm-hmm. when I read it. It doesn't feel like PG-13 where, uh, you know, you can just pick it up or whatever. It just... The way it's structured, the way that they talk, the way the world is. I mean, the, the, the leader of the team is an alcoholic puking into, you know. <laughs> was it he? No, no, it was a machine man who saw these, these little aliens. Uh, they gave him a, a mystical power. So the first thing he does is he turns around and he beats the living crap out of them. I know. And that is so drunk that he pukes onto them. <laughs> and, like, that's it. That's the end. <laughs> I'm just like this is the best thing ever. My favorite was Fing Fang Boom. I just like I couldn't, I couldn't stop laughing. And it's funny because when they brought him into the number one for Fantastic Four, I kept giggling and I was just like, I kept wondering, I'm like, is he gonna shove things down his pants again? <laughs> and he didn't. And I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, it was so funny. Um, it's just so, it's just so bizarrely brilliant. Yeah. You know, it never does what you expect it to do. Right. And it has all of these characters, some of which you know, some of which you, you don't. You know, I don't know Captain Fuck or whatever the hell his, his name is. Captain Shit, whatever his, his, that bleeped out name <laughs> is supposed to be. Yeah, I went with Captain Fuck. For yeah. yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> but I, at the end of that first volume, I, I like them all so much, you know, but in that dysfunctional way that you're supposed to like them, whereas... None of them are really very sound people, mm-hmm. but they all bring such personality to, to the proceedings that you can't help but just want to keep going on adventures with mm-hmm. them. I love, uh, what's her name, the, the woman, the girl who does like the tick, tick, boom thing where she, she yes. shoots energy uh, what is her name? out of her hand. Oh. Oh, there's so many people on the team I can't remember. I have the yeah. book right in front of me. You can check. I love that affectation. I think it's just a great, quirky affectation for a character to have to produce this awesome power that is so destructive, but she says, she has to say this tick-tick-boom uh, ridiculous phrase. So, it, yeah, 
it's it's amazing, and I actually haven't, I haven't even read the second volume of it yet, but it, it's it's up there with some of my favorite stuff ever, just because of that first volume. I even love how they portray, how they portrayed Monica Rambeau, where she's yeah. like, when I was in the Avengers, and she just <laughs> kept dropping that, and it it was just such a wonderful bit. And I loved her in Captain Marvel, but it was great to see her off the bench, and it was just great how they went with that portrayal, making making kind of fun of uh, in a very like a affectionate way of her history as being Captain Marvel. Um, Tabitha Smith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. Tabitha Smith. Yeah, that, it's Tabitha. It's Tabitha, yeah. yeah. So No, yeah, absolutely. Uh, great, great stuff. Great, great stuff. Um, one of the things I read that, that's not going to end up probably making it to uh, the show, unfortunately, I mean, I don't, I don't know what everybody else is going to bring to the table yet, obviously, but I read Magneto number one. Ooh. Yeah, I read about maybe a quarter, maybe half of it before we started recording. So I, I read a, a, like a taste of it. Uh, it's I first of all, I really, really liked it a lot. It probably won't end up making because we're we're trying to cut down the amount of books we do every week. So it's probably not going to be my top two. But you know, I was on the fence about picking it up, and Rob kind of threw it on top of my pile. Yeah. Kinda like just just take it. You know, you're going to want to read it so you can talk about it on the site and on the show and stuff like that. So I said, okay. Uh, Cullen Bunn wrote it, who obviously wrote Fearless Defenders, and he's writing that. The, he writes the Deadpool minis. Mm -hmm. Right now he's writing Night of the Living Deadpool. And, you know, it tells the story of kind of what Eric Luncher does when he's not in the pages of Uncanny X-Men, is the, is the feeling about what's going on there. And... You know what? I, I didn't know what to expect. It's a, it's a kind of a villain book. I mean, he's kind of a villain, kind of not a villain. And I, I didn't know if it was if, if I needed to read it. But going through it, I was I was really kind of taken by, by what Bun decided to do in, in the book. You know, it's it, it, we're kind of getting a taste of some Forever Evil as well. And definitely not going to talk about Forever Evil tonight because that is definitely going to be a topic of conversation. I'm not even going to mention... It, it, except to say that it is amazing. Wait, yeah, you were freaking out? Yeah, amazing. Yeah. But one of the cool things about that book has been going to the villain's eyes, and even though they're kind of, they're good villains, you know, they're they're the, the more complicated of the villains, they, they're still villains, right? And you get reminded of that, especially in this latest Forever Evil, and that's what kind of Magneto is all about. Is this guy... He's a very complicated guy, and he he's not a full-on villain anymore, but he still will do some pretty messed up stuff <laughs> when, when, when it comes down to it. You know, he he is he just he flat out kills people in, in this book several times. And and you know, it's not that you approve of it, but it's Magneto, so you kind of take it in, and the way that they they show his powers off, there's especially there's the one at the very beginning, which mm -hmm. is is pretty awesome. But hey. oh man, we are joined yes. by Hugh Perry, Yay. Uh, Yay. Yes. the man, the myth, the <laughs> legend. It's Hugh Perry is you. here. Yay! Okay, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, <laughs> what beer are you drinking there, Hugh? Oh, it's it's um, it's Pepsi Max. Oh, okay. <laughs> properly hard Heavy stuff. In, in a cause cause pint glass. Mm. Nice. All right. I knew. I thought it was either Pepsi or Guinness. Those are the two things it possibly could have been. So. No, there's, there's no head on it, so it's definitely not Guinness. <laughs> so yeah, Magneto, the 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 last few pages, especially when he kind of gets where he's going. The art. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to short change the artist at all, um, whose last name is Walter. But I need to look up the actual first name, um, if I can find the title page because it's hidden somewhere. Uh, I don't know where it is. Oh, it's in the back. All right. Uh, Gabriel Hernandez Walter is the is the name of the artist with uh, colors by Jordi Belair. So you know they're great colors. Um, very kind of different art style. You know. Uh, a little bit simpler than maybe you're used to seeing, a little bit more, I guess, indie than you're used to in a Marvel book, but I guess that, that's not even something you can really say anymore with, with the, the art we've seen, especially in all new Marvel now, you know, whether it be Miss Marvel or Punisher or, you know, a range of books that they put out, or Moon Knight as well. 
it, it, it's very different art. It looks, it, it definitely sets itself apart from the kind of Bendis X Men stuff. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I did really, really enjoy it. It's definitely something I want to pick up a second issue of. And I was surprised because usually villain books aren't my bag. So I, 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 I was happy about Magneto number one. I really. Oh, sorry. No, okay, Kelly, go ahead. I really love the Scotty Young variant cover where it's all the spoons and forks flying towards his head. Oh, yeah. The helmet. I thought that was really cute. Sorry. No, it's all right. It's totally all right. Um, Q. Yes. How was your week, sir? Good. Um, just tired, working. Spent the day wallpapering and work today. Um, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, off to the football tomorrow. Um, so, and I've got a. Um, I'll sh- I'll show you my to read pile now, which is fairly substantial. Whoa. Oh boy! Whoa! And, and yeah, I, it's set to grow by about twenty comics when I get my uh, load from my friend on Monday as well. That's so, like my to read pile right now. Yeah. So um, yeah, I'm gonna be busy. <laughs> You are going to be busy. Um, what do you? So you got, you're going to the football tomorrow. Yes. Who's uh, who's playing? Um, the the mighty Cardiff City against Fulham. Fulham is Fulham not a good team. Um, they they're the one team at the moment that can definitely be said that they're worse than we are. Yes. Okay. <laughs> 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 in, in terms of league standings, that that is an actual stone cold fact. So, <laughs> yes, for once we will be the superior team. We'll probably lose, but <laughs> we will be better. So when you uh, when you go to these uh, these matches, when you go to the pitch, you do you uh, are you a <laughs> are you a hooligan? <laughs> yeah, are you? Every time I mention football, you ask me this. Is this true? I I think, know, it's been a while. I think I think last time you asked me was my my answer was um, yes. I've killed many people. Ah, okay. <laughs> Still, um, Still, and have you killed anyone else since? Uh, oh yeah, loads. Okay. I've I've got all their heads on spikes in my garden. <laughs> all right. Awesome. <laughs> um, but no, it's quite it's quite a chilled out affair. <laughs> Depends. I'm just imagining Depends it's like on... Game of Thrones, and you just like have all the spikes outside your house, just like of all the people you've killed with the heads on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a gate. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, for, he's for going. Uh, he's going to the the European equivalent of Home Depot tomorrow to set it up. Yeah. Oh, we've got IKEA here, so I'll just do it on the cheap. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna have IKEA pikes? <laughs> yeah, why not? Dude, there's gonna be some probably... expensive pikes, man. Yeah, they'll probably come flat packed. You Look. should carve them yourself. Really get into it. <laughs> yeah, the, fl- my... the Philorkin pikes. Yeah, number <laughs> the shit out of that. That sounds like a Street Fighter move. The Philorkin pike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's the new Swedish combatant. Yeah, the, the Swedish chef, please. Yes. Flirty, <laughs> dirty, dirty. All right. Uh, so you, you, jo- you showed us your giant to read pile, Hugh. Yes. Have you read anything, though? Um, the last. Oh, I actually have, like, a stack of things that I've read. Um, you should give us your thoughts on Kingdom Come. Since... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Short version, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I quite like the um, some of the themes in it. Like for me, I quite um, what I took from it was like the whole bit with the like the newspaper where sort of like the public turns against um, Superman. Um, like for me, it was kind um, kind of indicative of like uh, like people always like to see the popular things fail and popular people fail and it you know the sort of backlash mentality so I kind of like saw that about it but yeah it's re- like it wasn't what I was expecting I went into it not really knowing that much about it um, yeah it was different I would, I'll say that much but yeah I, re- I did really enjoy it it was really good um, 
you caught me a bit on the hop, so I can't really think. All right, all right. So then, what else is in your file then? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to derail That's you. Okay, <laughs> it's fine. Um, it's uh, m most of what I've read is sort of I've, like I'm a little bit behind on things, so I've read, I've got like, uh, Batman, Superman, four, five, six, and seven, um, Kickass three, um. Three, four, and five, which is boring. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm not enjoying it. I'm. I'm gonna finish the set off just to see how it finishes, but it's just, it's just the same old now. It's mm. just like, you know, people hitting each other with stuff and the odd swear word. Well, um, tell me, tell me about Batman Superman, Hugh, because I, I haven't read it in a while. Like, I dropped off of it. I was enjoy I was enjoying the the first arc, but I, it just it was too murky for me, and it, it kind of lost me after a while. So yeah, I'll be honest with you. After reading like these few issues, I actually emailed the guy I get my comics off and asked him to um, drop it because I'm picking like a few um, like I'm adding like Miss Marvel and um, Captain Marvel and a few other things to my pull list. So yeah, I do it's just like you say, the first the first arc I, I enjoyed. Um and it was it was quite a fair bit removed from what I was expecting from the book. because um, it was quite sort of off the wall. Um but yeah, it's just a bit um I don't know, it just seems a little bit over the top now. Hmm, interesting. Um interesting. Like it's very sort of like that just basically sums it up. It's just lots of things being hit. <laughs> um and I don't I like I really enjoyed the um the Superman Batman comic that I think Jeff Loeb did a big run on it, like in the early two thousands. Yeah. And that yeah. started off like the first arc of that was called World's Finest. And it was really good and it was, you know, really uh, the relationship between Clark and Bruce and that was done really well. Like they, you know, you could tell they were friends, but you like there was still that sort of element of, you know, Bruce looking at Clark and thinking, yeah, you're just a stupid farm boy type thing. Mm -hmm. But it was done with it was, you know, done with a good heart. It was you know light-hearted and it was, you know, two people who respect each other a lot going out and being heroic, um, and. Yeah, it's just a bit. It seems a bit all style, no substance now, um, unfortunately. Which, for me to drop a book with Batman in it is extremely unusual. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of skimmed through that because I was just a bit sort of blah about it. Um, but then there's Adventure Time, which I read a load of. How's dude? How is that? I I I dropped that a long time ago, but it was really good for a long time. Um, it's it kind of maintains its level. It's still really good fun. It's still, you know, pretty crazy. Um, I think if anything, from what I've seen of the show recently, I think the the comic is probably more accessible than the show is these days. Because from what I've seen of recent episodes of the show, it's getting even more crazy. Um, but yeah, it's really good. It's still really funny. I, I quite, in, to be honest, when I, when I read it, I look forward to, you know, the little bits, of, uh, the, like, comments at the bottom of the pages that are written in, like, tiny little writing. And it's like, in, in this one, is that, um, I have an editor here, so you'll just have to imagine the next 25 pages that we have to cut. <laughs> Anyway, they were 100% lemon grab screaming in a variety of ways, both subtle and gross. <laughs> um, it's just, you know, it's just a good fun book, and it's quite, it's a nice break from sort of um, some of the more serious know, stuff that you're reading. Yeah, heavy going stuff, and I like the little, um, the little backup stories at the back are usually quite fun as well. Well, I think that the one from Free Comic Book Day for Adventure Time, where it was like a choose your own adventure, and it was hysterical. It's yeah, so I missed funny. that one, so unfortunately. Hmm. Mm. But, um, yeah, that's what I've read so far, and I've read um, Avengers 24 point now, all new, fangled, 
<laughs> with battles on. Um, I enjoyed it. I'll have to see where it where it goes from here. It just I I'm not not really bothered. With, I haven't bothered with Avengers World or anything like that because I just it's just a bit much now. It's just Avengers on Avengers books. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I actually dropped Avengers. Really? I did too. Yeah. Yeah. Avengers, I dropped it. I just it wasn't that I wasn't enjoying it, but mm. I think we talked about this um, when I, we talked about uh, Fantastic Four on the show this past week, which was that that was a B level book and it was a mm. good book. But I have no. I, I spent too much money on comics to buy anything that's a B level. Yeah. You know, it it does. I don't ruin my brain or my my bank, my bank account to, you know, to to buy books like that. So, and I don't think Hickman's Avengers is a B level book, but it's a book that takes a lot of time investment to get the full feeling out of. Yeah. And we, I feel like we got to Infinity. And I really loved Infinity a lot. I thought it was a great event. And then when we got out of Infinity, I felt like we were just kind of, okay, now we're starting over again with a whole... Mo we had just gotten to the point where all the stuff you've been waiting for for a year to come to a head had come to a head. And now we're going to start all over again with a bunch of new stuff that's got to brew and brew and brew and brew and then come to a head. Yeah. And, and add that on to the stuff that came before because you know the stuff that came before Infinity is still going to be part of whatever happens in his end game, so you know, it's something that I feel like I would love to check back on and maybe get trades of possibly and read in bulk, but issue to issue, it just I, I never dislike the issues, but I'm never amazed by them either. Yeah, I mean, it's very much a sort of like after the, sort of, like you say, the big builder, Infinity was just like this massive climax, and it was, you know, it, it that event, like hit the nail on the head it was you know absolutely brilliant um, and this feels very much sort of like it's peaked and it's just gone bump and you're back at sort of square one mm -hmm. you know it's still a very good book it's well written and the stuff like you read the issue and you're like hmm you know what can, what might be coming could be pretty cool mm -hmm. but you're just like oh, here we go again and it's just yes. like fin finishing a marathon, sitting down, and then someone coming up to you and going, <laughs> right, you need to start training now. Um, so, yeah, it's it's just a tiring book at the end of the day, but like, I'll, st I'll stick with it and see how it goes. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm still... I've still got a, fi like, a few things to catch up on because my um, friend that gets my comics was uh, screwed over by... Um, Diamond. So I've like I'm only on like issue thirteen of New Avengers, which I think mm. is the Inhumanity issue. Um, speaking of which, I really enjoyed the first issue of In Inhumanity, and then looked at the back, and I was like, oh, I didn't realize it was branching off into all these other books because I think I remember you guys saying it on the podcast, and I was like, right, I'm gonna have to get on eBay now and try and track all these other issues down. <laughs> well, I think. Well, I mean, there's a lot of tie-in books from from the other series, yeah. but. The only other, I think the only other one that's come out, as far as the ones it lists in the back, is kind of Inhumanity spinoff with the Inhumanity lo label on it, has been that Medusa one, which yeah. got which got rebranded as Inhumanity number two. Um, it's confusing anyway because we also then have Inhuman coming mm -hmm. soon. It, it's just, it's a it's confusing naming for for those for those books, but yeah, it's funny like. I've been really kind of loving this little corner of the Marvel Universe that's been developing in the all-new that seems to be separate from this bigger stuff, like Black Widow and, and, and Miss Marvel and books like that. I feel like I feel like I don't I'm not I'm not beholden to the the, the, the Hickman verse or the Bendis verse or any of them. I can just read these books and, and kind of be happy with them. Yeah. So Yeah. Yeah, and uh, speaking of, of of all new Marvel now, um, Hugh, you joined us late, so I don't I don't and I don't know if you were listening before you you joined us, but we're going to be discussing our favorite uh, all new Marvel now number ones. Okay. Uh, what we like the most, what we think needs the most work, and 
and what we're most excited for in the future, because obviously we have some that haven't come out as well. I mean, there's a list on Wikipedia of all the books, so uh, if you guys, uh, I know Steve has it pulled up, um, I pulled up. and so does Kelly. So oh. if you want, if you want to get that pulled up, oh. you or you just yeah, want to go off, now. off your wonderful brain, you can do either one. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't build my brain up too much. <laughs> um. So, so uh, let's go. Let's you know I'm gonna do this kind of um, month by month, I guess, and we'll kind of go through it. All um, right. So I starting in January of this year. January was a pretty big. Was was a pretty big. Uh, we've got uh, Black Widow, Avengers World, all new X Factor, and all new Invaders. All came out in January of this year. Um, Kelly, of those books, what what were the stand what was the standout to you? It's funny, I actually haven't read any of those. Oh wow, okay. Those are the ones like I, I wanted we weren't sure about Black Widow and um, now it's one of it's like I, I will tell you Black Widow is the one I want to read the most. Um, just based on what you guys have said on the podcast, but also just like the plot and Phil Noto's art has really grabbed me. But because I was so behind, it was kind of like, all right, I'll wait a little bit. Um, but uh, my boyfriend did read All New X Factor, and he liked it, but again, he was just, like, not ready to commit to it. He, I think he wants to wait for trade for that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Steve, what about you? Out of those, I would have to give the top spot to Black Widow. Yeah. So, it, uh, I don't know, but with the... Uh, all New Invaders was cool. I liked the first issue, but um, what was it? X Factor was one of the other ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, X Factor after unfortunately after three issues, just it's not hitting for me yet. I'm um, I'm also gonna do the the trade waiting thing for that. I do want to read it, but so far the the team and I feel where we like our jumping off point for the first couple of issues just wasn't one that I was comfortable with, and uh, I don't know. It didn't didn't really pan out the way that I wanted it to. But Black Widow is first of all Phil Noto's art is a standout all on its own. It's just it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. I love his use of color. Uh, just his whole style is really really something. I've seen a couple of things from him, but nothing ever full length like this. Like him doing whole interiors and and the whole bag and whatever. And uh, it's just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, it took me about maybe three issues to really settle into it and settle into the, the tone and just the vibe. And I think part of it was that I'm, I'm so used to seeing Black Widow around people and participating within a group and always just kind of being there and being a part of a, a, a larger you know amount of people. Whereas in this, she's very serious and it's it, you know it's dark and it it's got a lot of uh it's like spy spy espionage stuff going on in it and it's a redemption tale and just a tone that i wasn't expecting and had to settle into but once i did i really dug it and i really like the new marvel now is there's a couple of them that have a feeling about them that other books of theirs don't have and Black Widow is definitely one of those standout books that just has its own thing going on for it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me as well, Black Widow is obviously the standout there. It's the one I want to read uh, the most. I enjoyed All New Invaders. Uh, didn't, you know, fall for it uh, hard, though. It, it was a book that I... It, those books, if I was buying less titles, I, w I would definitely keep buying it. But the fact that I'm buying so many... If I'm going to buy... Uh, books like that, there has to be a, very, a, a style that, that calls to me, and kind of the classic style of All New Invaders, it doesn't really call to me a, 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 in, in that kind of, oh, this is, stands out from the pack, like, like you know, Black Widow's milieu does. Uh, and All New X Factor, I loved X Factor, but it just does didn't do it for me. You know, it, it just... Yeah. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe if we, we, we check back and you know, uh, uh, six months or, or, or something that they'll, the, Peter David will have really developed something great, but it just, it's not there yet. I mean, 
Hugh, I don't know how many of these you're even reading, but did you read any of those ones I mentioned? Um, I've read the first issue of Old New Invaders. Um, kind of enjoyed it, but it didn't really grab me, so I just... I, I think I, that's when I'm just going to leave and check it out once it's got a complete arc finished and just go from there and I'll, you know, I'll see how, how it goes after the first arc and then I might start picking it up then consistently after that. Mm. Um, I fully intend on reading Black Widow. Um, I was waiting to see how it was received before um, before I started picking it up or whether whether I did at all. Um, but, you know, you guys all, all seem to be really enthusiastic about it and everybody I know who's read it has really enjoyed it, so I'm definitely going to check that one out. Um, right. Other than that, because I'm fairly careful with my budget and how I spend, <laughs> I've uh, not picked anything else up. <laughs> out so, of the so you're a smart man. Yeah. I try <laughs> smart my best. Man. Smart man. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, we had someone else join us. Uh, your mic is muted right now. So uh, there should be at the top of the screen, there should be a, a button to unmute your mic, just so you know. Um, and then please join in uh, the conversation. Uh, so February 2014, um, we had X-Force, Wolverine, She-Hulk, The Punisher, New Warriors, Miss Marvel, Loki, Agent of Asgard, and Fantastic Four. Damn. All came out this past month in February. Um, Kelly, I'll go back to you. What, what, what's been your standout of that, of that group? I mean, Miss Marvel has been, I think, tremendous. She's really, that, that story, I think, is just knocking it out of the park. Um, but I also really loved Loki, Agent of Asgard. I, I thought it was going to be very um, fan service if that makes sense, because, like, Tom Hilston just made that, made him just, like, I, I don't know how to phrase it. Like, you know, all the... He just became like everybody has a crush on him now, kind of like a lot of like there's a lot of fan girls and everything, and that's fine, that's totally cool, but I just didn't want it to be simple fan service and just like straight up only about how he is like cute or whatever I guess. And the story was just definitely much more than that. The humor was much more than that. The art was much, which just went beyond that. And of course, like I'm sure they're gonna try to play a little bit to the Tom Hiddleston portrayal, which is fine because Tom Hiddleston was awesome, but. I was just very surprised at how good the book was and how much fun it was. And I mean, the fact that it opens with him singing the, a, a song from Wicked in the shower was just like, it was perfect. It was awesome. Yeah, and the, the great thing about it is he keeps the, uh, uh, Al Ewing keeps the complicated uh, lineage of this version of Loki very much in the forefront. The, the same thing that Gillen kind of started to form where, you know, he, he, he died and he remade himself and now he, he's kind of a different person and then, and then in Young Avengers, you know, the, the, the former Loki kind of, basically what he says is he, he, he killed the, the new Loki to, to give himself a chance to be the, you know, the, this good person and, and to right the wrongs and to make Loki no longer the god of evil. Mm -hmm. And, it gets complicated. I mean, there's complicated stuff about dealing with a god. Like, how? Wh what are you, right? You, you are, you are because people believe in you. That's why you exist. And so you are going to then be shaped by what people believe you as. And so I love this mission of not only trying to do good things to be good, but to do good things so that your past and this evil part of you can't come back and get you. Yeah. Because you're no longer that person. I think it's a very, it's a very different way, and a very kind of esoteric way of, of dealing with a, a crisis like that. Yeah, totally agree. It's it's just a really great book. Yeah, absolutely. So we had we have someone else, someone else join us. Introduce yourself. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Oh, you mean me? Yes, you. <laughs> <laughs> I I was reading Vendetta. I got distracted. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Um, I was saying, introduce yourself to everyone. Uh, hello, my name's Chris. I do the Comic Squee podcast. I'm listening to Tom, uh, talking comics for a while. Awesome. Hey. Awesome. Hello. Very, very great to have you here. Um, 
So what? Uh, what? What? I don't even want to reread the list of of them. Are you reading any of them? All new Marvel Now books. I am reading a, a few of them. Black Widow's very good. Mm. Uh, picked up Moon Knight. Moon Knight number one is fabulous. <laughs> it, it is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Jordi Belair's coloring really sells it. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. Um, and we were just talking about Loki, Agent of Asgard, but also, obviously, February brought us Miss Marvel, and we did a whole podcast dedicated to that, but it's... I mean that's a special book, and it. I I we, you know we we've always talked about this in the show, but we've been we've been doing this for a couple of years now, and I felt like a couple of years ago there was very few books that were outside of the normal capes and tights for a select audience group of books, and now I feel like there's so many more of them, and yeah, and Miss and Miss Marvel has been is a is a great evidence of that because. It's it's a legacy character from uh, from a title that you know didn't sell gangbusters, right? I mean, uh, Captain Marvel's reach has obviously been shown in, in in its fan base and in its cultural impact, but as far as pure diamond numbers, did not did not sell enough to warrant continuing the numbering, right? So we're getting a relaunch of that, but because of how culturally important that book was. We get a spin-off of that book with not only a female character but a Muslim female character. But the greatest thing about the book is that those things are part of the the book, but they're not what the book is, right? The book is about right. a great, you know, interesting person who just happens to be those two things, and that's to me what makes it such a standout uh, of those of those groups of books. Um, Indeed. Steve, I don't know if it is... is sorry. No, go ahead. It is really good. Uh, she's totally an inhuman, by the way. Mm, yeah, she is. Yeah. Yes, she is. Which I, is. I read the last issue, I'm like, ha ha, she totally is. And my husband was like, what? Oh my gosh, you're right. <laughs> Even the guy at the comic store hadn't like kicked up on that. It's pretty fun. <laughs> um, Hugh, I know you're trying to save money. Any of those books that I mentioned? Did you read any of those? Um, yeah, I, the, the one book that... I really wanted to make sure I picked up um, was Miss Marvel, um, and I absolutely loved it. I think it was brilliant. Um, and as Steve will know, why that it's the first comic that I've ever sat down and showed to my girlfriend and gone, read this. I think you'll. Uh, you know, this will be uh, your thing. Yes, the gateway. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. um, um, for those of you who don't know, um, my girlfriend is Muslim and she's Pakistani. Oh, and oh wow. She's also a girl. <laughs> um, so, completes the three. We appreciate um, the clarification here. Right? <laughs> yeah. Just in case you didn't realize. Um, so, she, she, you said that she flipped out for it, right? Yeah, I mean, she really enjoyed it. I mean, she sat, she sat down with it, and she was um, like the bit with, um, like when uh, her mother comes up to her room and gets like calls her down to eat with everybody, um, and like her brother sat at the table praying, and her father's like saying to him, you know, if you pray to, you know, you pray too much, or and stuff like that, and she was just sat there giggling at it, and she was like, "Yeah, you, you know, this, you see this all the time. This is what like Muslim families are like. They're just like sat at the the dinner table, just like butting heads, and just pulling each other's legs." And she she went through it, and she put it down. She was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna keep up with that," and I was like, "Brilliant." And I said to her, you know, I asked her what she thought of. You know whether it was a bit, you know, felt stereotypical or something like that to her, and she she said to me, no, she was like, pretty much every Muslim girl in Western society will have thought of, you know, at some point during their life, why why can't I be like everybody else? Mm -hmm. So she said, you know, for, you know, a it's just a good story, and b if you know if there are you know, young Muslim girls reading it, then, you know, they'll be, you know, they'll connect with it on a different level. So, 
you know, apart from that, it's just really well written, and I love the art in it as well. Really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really good stuff. But that's that's the only one I've read for um, February, anyway. Hmm. Awesome. Sweet. Awesome. Steve, what about you? Ah, uh, well, the answer is is most certainly uh, Miss Marvel. But it's just it's so it's refreshing to hear the the perspectives between you know your everybody's really. Um, I had a heated heated argument with a good friend of mine last night about the book and just what you guys are saying about it is everything that I was saying to try and, and defend a part of it. Um, it's all down to personal opinions and whatnot, but um, he said that he felt that the book was almost oversaturated with like the, the Muslim aspects of the book. And I tried to explain to him that it's it's part of the character and that's like that's going to be a, a thing that runs throughout the comic and uh, it was just it, it went it went places I didn't want it to go but to hear everybody talk about it uh, is just great because I think it's a wonderful book I think it's an important book and uh, I think that it's be like the artwork is it looks like a fairy tale book to me. Yeah. You know, the everything down to, to the, the soft colors, to the, you know, squiggly lines. And the artist does this. One of the things that I love is when you pull, almost like if you're pulling the camera back and you're pulling the panel back and characters are smaller and they're, they're more difficult to draw, but they just, they, instead of trying to get down every little detail, they just have fun with it. And you have like almost just like blank faces with little specks for eyes and a little slit for the mouth. And it becomes almost this like cutesy kind of artwork all to its own. Um, if you look at the artwork throughout the book, it does that a lot, and it's just that's something that I enjoy in comics. And um, yeah, I don't know. I I I can't. I when is when does issue two come out? I feel like issue one came out like, like years ago. Yeah, I was saying on Twitter the other day. It feels like ten years since it last came out. I think it might be next week. Yeah, it could be. It could be. I'll have a look. Um, so we had someone new join us. I'm gonna totally butcher your name. So Sion. What's up? How you, you doing, man? What's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Your hair is epic, dude. I know. <laughs> I'm cut since 1979. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so that, that, okay. Wow. <laughs> How you doing tonight? Doing fine. Doing fine? Doing fine? Yeah. <laughs> Any big plans for the weekend, sir? Mm, me and my friend here, Watska, Mr. Watska. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good plan. It's a good plan. It's a very, very Woo. good plan. Um, people are coming fast and furious. We also have uh, Courtney joined us. Hello, Courtney. Hi. Hi, how are you? <laughs> good. How are you doing? Good. Um, welcome to Brood and Boarded. <laughs> Can I um, ask, um... <laughs> Things are getting a little out of control. Things are getting a little out of control. <laughs> 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 Can I right, raise my hand? Oh my god. Alright, let's 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 pass the stick. What what are we um Yeah, let's uh well I wanna ask Courtney um what uh what book she liked this week. Steon, you're 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 breathing too hard on your microphone, sir. I'm gonna have to mute you. <laughs> Alright. Hey. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go ahead, Courtney. Oh, no problem. Um, well, I'm Courtney K on the forum, um, if you see me there. So, obviously, I'm a big Loki fan, and Loki was my favorite book of the week. <laughs> um, but I also really liked uh, Moon Knight a lot. Um, and that was my first Warren Ellis um, thing that I'd read. So, I Ooh. enjoyed that. And I also um, read Veil, um, which I really liked. Uh, one of the girls at the comic shop sort of chased me down um, as I was browsing. It was like, I think you'd really like this. Um, so <laughs> it's <up> and really good. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So you're, you're, you're Courtney K from the forums? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> you are a great, you are a great, great listener and a, and, a, and an awesome contributor to the forum. So thank you for that. Thanks. Thank you, thank you so much for that. Um, we have a lot of people who joined us all of a sudden. Somebody opened the box of frogs. Yeah, there's a lot of people in here now. 
Um, um, March 19th, Miss Marvel 2 is up. Nice, March 19th. That's like two weeks. So that's like a six yeah, week gap, I think. I yeah, that's a that. long gap. Yeah. Maybe that's just, gap. that's going to be its day, you know, mm-hmm. every month. Mm-hmm. And they just wanted to have it set at that, that date. Who knows? It's better uh, than bloody uh, double shipping. Hmm. It's true. That's absolutely true. We have a we have a, another gentleman who joined us. He looks like he's in a found footage horror movie. Um, At Vager. Last. <laughs> How you doing, man? Good, man. <laughs> How are you? Good, 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 good. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna see like a ghost behind you any any second. Well, this this again, man. This again, man. You can make that happen. No? It's like. <laughs> So how you doing, really? man? Oh my goodness! There we go. Remember, remember. The 5th of I'm November. trying the hand movements. And they're, they're kind of bad, but he, the guy named Vigor, he's like ten times more bad at my hand movements. So bye. You guys all, you guys all know each other. Yeah, <laughs> I know that guy. He's like, oh, okay. He's like having diarrhea, diarrhea, and it's beyond diarrhea. Vigor's, Vigor's oh beyond the area, okay. <laughs> back to the comics. Yeah, back to the comics. Okay, bye. Back to the comics. Uh, back to the comics. <laughs> um, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. What an interesting development we've had. Um, <laughs> all right, so... Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Did you, did you just say thanks for coming? I did not say that, but we're gonna. Uh, well, things are getting a little bit. We're getting a little cluttered, and we've been going for about an, about an hour now. So I think we're gonna. It's it's about time to to, to wrap this thing up. Um, I wanna. <laughs> people are laughing. I'm gonna have to knock people out because it's just not working. Sorry, guys. Thanks for oh, coming. Uh, all right. So <laughs> that oh was interesting. God. Um. <laughs> thanks, everybody. <laughs> For, for joining us and, and tuning in. Um, thanks for listening to us, Jawbell Comics, on, on a Friday night. Um, enjoy your guys' weekend, and we will talk to you guys next time. Yep. All right. Thank Bye, you. guys. Bye. Bye. Good night, everybody. Bye. <laughs>